affectionately the name for the Bengals home for years that was Riverfront Paul Brown Stadium for the 30th straight time sold out Carson Palmer and the Bengals will wait Randy Moss and Bill Belichick's offense to the field first New England has won the toss and will receive that means Ellis Hobbs is back deep to receive against the Jets earlier this year the longest kickoff return in NFL history a shower around lunchtime been clear since temperature in the upper 60s and off we go to open October from Cincinnati Five yards deep is nothing to Hobbs. He'll bring it out from there. And gets spilled at the 20-yard line as Hernandez Jones is waiting for the special teams tackle. Here's Tom Brady, the quarterback who has it all and has done it all with three Super Bowl titles. And the numbers, as Jaws referred to in the beginning, eye-popping. Whether it's Randy Moss, Wes Welker, whoever's come along, it has helped Tom have this great start of the season 141.8 rating the, the mercury pops out of the dish on that <laughs> again Maroney out with the groin injury you'll see a lot of Kevin Falk and Sammy Morris tonight from the 21 to Moss gain of a half dozen as Delta O'Neill is there for the tackle this New England offense leading the league in yards number two in the league in points scored and really have done it with balance as well. Number three passing, number four rushing. They are right now the 27 Yankees. They are murderers row on offense right now. And they are spreading the field. They are attacking sideline to sideline. On second down, Brady steps up and dumps it to Falk with a ton of room to run. Across midfield, first down for Kevin Falk. But D.U. Williams makes the tackle. The gain was 24 yards. And a Bengal is injured on the play. It is the worst possible injury Cincinnati can have. Lamar Marshall is uh, slow to get up. He's on a knee at the 40-yard line. Why is that the worst possible? One, he's the starting strong side linebacker. Second, they only have four healthy linebackers dressed for this game tonight. Ahmad Brooks, starting middle linebacker, and his backup, Caleb Miller, are out with injury. They're going to take an ad out in the post to get a new one. Back in Cincinnati, Marshall hopped off the field, put no weight on his left ankle, and Brady's first down pass is incomplete. Janudum Ndukwe, the safety, put pressure on Brady. You know, Mike, if you watch this New England offense, what they will use is Kevin Falk as the receiving back. With Maroney out, you'll probably see more Kevin Falk. And when you have Sammy Morrison, it's more the power running game inside the tackles. Second and ten coming up for Cincinnati. Dahani Jones checked in to replace Lamar Marshall when they go to three linebackers. For a lot of DBs on the field here. A half dozen as Brady throws to Moss open in space to the 33-yard line. First down, a pickup of 17. Madea Williams made the tackle. Well, that Brady Moss connection has been so effective. Two catches here thus far, 24 on the season and Brady in the shotgun 66 percent of his passes this year have come out of the shotgun an inordinate amount for Tom Brady you can see clearly he's got that chemistry right now with Randy Moss outstanding timing and rhythm in the passing game Sammy Morris has checked in the game after four passes to open first run with Morris who takes it to the 28 yard line the linebacker who was injured Lamar Marshall taken off on a cart and he is back up towards the Bengals locker room so as we wait for word on him you look at a team that is completely decimated active linebackers coming into tonight for the Patriots who play the three four have eight linebackers active for the game tonight with Cincy losing one maybe we can use a trade like you used to in the schoolyard <laughs> just to keep things even tonight <laughs> Kevin Fox side by side with Morris pocket collapsing on Bracey on Brady passes incomplete and here's Susie on the Bengals sideline Mike, how about starting the game with your two starting linebackers out, only four on the roster, and then one of the newcomers to this linebacking core, Lamar Marshall, didn't join the team until after training camp because that core was already decimated. And you saw him limp off, wasn't able to put weight on it. It's a left Achilles, and he will not return. Oh, uh, it's brutal. He's in for Rashad Gentee. He's 
starting outside backer who injured a shin had surgery and he's out probably through the next couple of weeks to the 23 to get a first down Brady steps up completes it to West Welker for the first down at the 17 yard line gain of 11 Matt Light introduces us to the Patriots starting offense Thanks, Mike. This is definitely a big game for us, playing on the road Monday night football. The keys to this game, I think, for us is that we have to be able to handle their pressure up front, not let the guys on the edge get to the quarterback, and then we have to be able to run the ball effectively so that we can set up some of those down-the-field type passes. But all in all, this is going to be a big game. Monday night football, back to you. Thank you, Matt. Went to the Pro Bowl last year, the one Pro Bowl lineman of a very solid, underappreciated New England front five. And a run with Sammy Morris for about two yards to the 15-yard line. So no Maroney Jaws. What does Sammy Morris mean as he becomes more of a featured back tonight? You know, he's more of the power guy. He'll run between the tackles. They, they, they use him for their zone blocking scheme because he will stick that foot in the ground and head downhill. When Lawrence Maroney was active in this roster, he was more of a point of attack. In other words, they're going to run the counter trade. They want him to pick out one hole and go to it. Morris is more of an instinctive type of runner. They spread it, empty backfield, five receiving options for Brady. Will the Bengals come with pressure? Nobody open, now Brady up top for Dante Stallworth. Incomplete, and we'll have third down. Can I go back to the lineups? Did Matt Light even mention anybody's name, or did he just make a speech, which is a great way to do the lineups? I think he wanted my job. He broke the game oh, down. That was, that was a great, great job. That was great. <laughs> Keep playing, Matt. <laughs> No Lawrence Maroney here tonight in the game between these teams one year ago. Maroney ran it well for 125 yards. So we'll see who picks up the rushing yard void tonight. Passing situation here, third and seven. And Brady finds Welker again. Cannot get away from the second tackle. And Chinudum Ndukwe, the rookie out of Notre Dame, forces fourth down and a field goal attempt by New England. Excellent job by the Bengals defense. They went zone coverage. They rushed for everyone peering back into the backfield, looking for the short pass underneath. Once the ball came out of Tom Brady's hands, they rallied to the football. That's what you can do in zone coverage. Attack once the ball comes out of the quarterback's hands. Good, Good job. Victory for them that they did not give up a touchdown. Game. With, Second, with their defensive record? Come on. Second-year man out of Memphis, Steven Guskowski for a 31-yard attempt. And a puncher, Chris Hansen's hold. Knocks it down, and uh, as you said, Cincinnati does not allow the touchdown. Only giving up three. And the Bengals down for it. Let's see how far we come. Let's see how and you look at Paul Brown Stadium, just in the bottom corner, edging out of the picture, Great American Ballpark, where the Reds closed down business. The city was full of Chicago fans when the Cubs were here this weekend, but everybody a Cincinnati fan here tonight. A lot of orange and black in downtown throughout the day, and the Bengals wear the orange jerseys for just the fourth time. They are 3-0 in these jerseys. We have a return taken by Glenn Holt to the 21-yard line. He had the fumble against Seattle. That was a big part of the loss last week in the Northwest. Palmer takes the field when you come back. We were here for the opener when Cincinnati turned Baltimore over six times, 127-20. Then a 51-45 loss to in-state rival Cleveland at Cleveland. And then a three-point loss, 24-21 at Seattle. That's how they arrive at one and two. And Carson Palmer and the offense get going. Again, the numbers look impressive. But Cincinnati has turned the ball over more than Marvin Lewis would be happy with here in the first three games. No Rudy Johnson, so Kenny Watson out of Penn State is the runner here tonight. He gains, oh, about two and a half yards to the 23 and a half. So Kenny Watson, sixth year out of Penn State. Really, the only time he was a feature back was his second year in the NFL in Washington with the Redskins, filling in for Stephen Davis. He had a couple of hundred-yard games. Ron, by having Watson and not Rudy, what does it mean to the offense? It'll help them in the passing game. And, you know, when you look at their passing game, they like to go down the field. This will give Carson Palmer that short-range option. Against the Patriots 3-4 veteran defense with a lot of looks. It's Watson to the left. Pass Junior Seau into the arms of James Sanders right at the first down line at the 31-yard line. 
Are you saying, when you say it'll help them in their passing game, is it going to help them overall? I mean, Rudy, most people think of Rudy Johnson as a very accomplished back. Yeah, and he was a sustaining type back, Tony. He would get the power runs, the three and the four yards. I think with a Kenny Watson, you have the chance for the explosive plays. I think he can keep this offense on schedule as well, also give them the big explosive play. He could be better for them than Rudy I think Johnson? He, I think against a Patriot defense, he can be better. I think it's a better matchup with Kenny Watson in the backfield. Third straight run into the waiting arms of Adalis Thomas. Loss of a yard and a half. The offensive line's led by Willie Anderson, and he introduces us to the rest of the Bengal offense. Monday Night Football in the Nancy Natty. You guys know about our offense, and it starts up front with the big sexies. We all have to win our individual matchups for this whole thing to tick off. Then our so-called skill guys can go to work. Monday night, baby. Here we come. Our so-called skill guys. You got to like that. It's said by an offensive lineman. <laughs> starting his 116th consecutive NFL game. Palmer's first pass. In and out of the hands of third receiver Antonio Chapman. It's been a season-long search for a third receiver. So before third down, Adalis Thomas introduces us to the rest of the New England defensive crew. Second down the D-line, we got T. Weezy, V. Weezy, and J. Jeezy. At the linebackers, you got Mike Vrabel, Teddy Bruschi, and R59.com. Anchor down to secondary, we got Mook Mount Samuels and Hollywood Hobbs. Asante Samuel making his first start of the season, played in a reserve role in the first couple of games. Palmer is pressured, grabbed, and brought to the ground. A Dalis Thomas getting to the quarterback. The free agent acquisition from Baltimore has had a huge impact on an already good Patriots defense. So neither Weezy, Geezy, or Deezy got to him that time, but Adalis did. Yes, he did. There's, there's no question that Adalius Thomas, number, ni number 96 right there, is the guy that can really get after the quarterback. He can play pass coverage, and he can rush the quarterback. There is he, Adalius Thomas. Good quickness getting to Carson Palmer. Kyle Larson to punt it. Wes Welker back to receive it. Good pick by Larson. Welker from the 29. Taken down at the 37-yard line. And with the injuries to linebackers, that's another place it hurts. Special teams for one of the linebackers, Landon Johnson, the tackle. Thomas' sack erases the Bengals' threat. Back in Cincinnati, Michelle Tafoya, Susie Culver on the sideline. Ron Jaworski, Tony Kornheiser, Mike Tirico in the booth in Cincinnati as the Patriots on Monday Night Football. Chance to watch Tom Brady and Randy Moss working together for their fourth game. 27 times this season, Brady has thrown to Moss 24 of them completions. A fabulous start. Sammy Morris, the run. Only a gain of about a yard and a half. Landon Johnson, one of the three healthy linebackers, made the tackle. Let's go to Moss right away as you see him on the screen. This is the deal with the devil that the Patriots have made, similar to what Terrell Owens had going to Dallas. Randy Moss is the anti-Patriot. He was selfish. He was a loafer. He got in trouble with coaches. He was a team killer and a cancer. Last team on earth you would expect to take him with the Patriots. They love him. He's flourishing. It shows you that a great player in a system where he's comfortable can be a great player. Flourishing an understatement. Bengals have six defensive backs on the field and jumping around up front caused the Patriots to move. Offense number seven. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Logan Mankins with the flag. Jerome Boger is our referee tonight. We asked Tom Brady yesterday about that same notion that Moss was somehow the anti Patriot. And Brady said, I don't care about the past. It's a clean slate here. And then he said, You don't have to go to the seminary to play for the New England Patriots. Just got to buy into the message when you get there. <laughs> Once again, the empty formation. Tom Brady in the shotgun. And against the six DBs, the first open man gets the penalty yardage back. And it is a pass caught by Benjamin Watson, the tight end. Here's Dexter Jackson, the safety with the Bengals defensive lineup. Cincinnati Bengals D-line. Justin Franchise Smith. Robert All Day Gathers. At backer, we have Silent Assassin, Landon Johnson. At corner, we have Delta O'Neal and up and coming, Jonathan Joseph. At safety, we have Madhu Williams and myself, former MVP, Dexter. Of Super Bowl victory by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in 2002. Yeah, another flag for movement by the Patriots? Yes, it is. All-star offense, number 84. 
five-yard penalty, still third down. Watson, the tight end. It's very loud in here. But, Ron, one thing Cincinnati does, and I know they gave up 51 points to Cleveland, they can put pressure on Bill Belichick's offense here tonight. There's no question. Chuck Bresnahan, the defensive coordinator for the Bengals, loves to give you different looks. 3-4, 4-3, nickel, dime, people moving in and out. And it is really incumbent upon Tom Brady to identify people quickly. He's got a lot of calls to make in the line. Right there, there was confusion. It caused illegal motion for the, for the uh, Patriots. And it's back to Don, six DBs, one linebacker playing zone. Brady pressured. He's checked down as Kevin Falk. Can they tackle him? Yes, in the open field. Third tackle for Chinuda Ndukwe. And Brady Quinn's former roommate at Notre Dame forces the Patriots to punt. Hey, it's a Patriots punt. Do you know Chris Hansen? No, never heard of him. Yeah. Is he the punter? No, he's never not the guy from Dateline NBC. It's this Chris <laughs> Hansen. He's only punted four times. This is the third team in 67 years to have four or fewer punts in this first three-game stretch. Will he still get a letter? <laughs> <laughs> no, but he gets paid. Well, it was a good punt. <laughs> Third catch signal for and made <laughs> by Skyler Green at the 19-yard line. Bengals defense hanging in there. Three-nothing Patriots. Patriots have had two possessions. Cincinnati's second possession coming in this three-nothing game. This during the timeout. The always chatty Chad. He's chatting and shaking hands with everybody like he's the maitre d tonight. <laughs> Saying hello to uh, Akron, Ohio born Ohio State Buckeye alum Mike Vrabel playing back in his native state tonight. A lot of runs on the first drive. Start with a pass and Kenny Watson just a couple of yards in front of fourth year defensive back Randall Gay out of LSU. Well, Ron, we have two guys who just love to sit in the pocket, get time, and throw the ball. And look at these numbers updated through tonight. Yeah, it's very interesting. And you see Tom Brady. He's moved outside the pocket only one time. Carson Palmer seven times. These are big, strong quarterbacks that like to have their eyes downfield reading coverage, and they love the timing and rhythm of the passing game. And for perspective, the NFL average is 11% of the passes come from outside the pocket. These guys are in the pocket more than most. Jeremy Johnson, the fullback with the carry to the 25, will have third and about five and a half coming up. And, Ron, when you have pocket-passing quarterbacks, you better have an offensive line that can protect how Cincinnati's offensive line done this year. Yeah, and, and they've been they've been outstanding for most of the season, and they've, had, and they've had some injuries up front. But also, when you look at an offense that likes to work the sidelines, it's even incumbent even more now for that offensive line to give Carson Palmer time because he's taking those seven-step drops. Right now, they're trying to stay on schedule and keep this offense in that third and five situation, which they are in right now. No throws to Hushmanzada or Chad Johnson yet. Palmer feeling the pressure, checks it down to the fullback, and Johnson's going to be a yard shy of the first down. What a good job by Ellis Hobbs to come up and make the play. That should send the Bengals punting unit on the field, and it will. Mike, when you have a, a, a quarterback that likes to be in the pocket, you want to put pressure on him and force him to move. Force him to move his feet. Get off balance and check the ball down. It's exactly what the Patriot pass rush did there. They forced the move. Now, Brady is normally very good at mobility in the pocket, but when you get that cabin fever, you want to get the ball out of your hand. In other words, cabin fever is pressure around the quarterback. Bengals special teams have been poor. Wes Welker back deep to receive. Welker tells everybody they're not catching it. Stay away. This wasn't a very good kick. A kick of about 35 yards when it's marked down. It was first touched at the 35-yard line. Tom Brady back on the field after this. College football on Thursday night to start a big weekend on ESPN. Brady's first pass complete to Dante Stallworth. Give him 14 yards in the first down at the 49-yard line in front of Madi Williams. Well, here's Tom Brady in the pocket. And this is pocket mobility, not running around, running for 10 yards. It's feeling the pressure, moving up in the pocket, moving laterally in the pocket. Tom Brady does an excellent job moving up to his right and delivering the ball to the playmaker here, Wes Welker. It's interesting, you use the word mobility. I'm usually thinking of Michael Vick when he was in the league or Tony Romo when he has shown. Sammy Morris more than mobile on his way. Sammy Mars kept his balance, got to the two-yard line, fumbling the ball. It looks like the ground causing the fumble. Should keep it at the one. Let's see. 
was he brought down by the player and that action brought him to the ground then causing the fumble the officials discussing it now because it went out of the end zone on the fumble and if it goes out of the end zone and call the fumble it's a touchback excellent blocking right there Heath Evans number 44 did a terrific job as did Russ Hochstein number 71 on the pull and it was ruled that he came down via down by contact ground caused the fumble ball to two. the ruling on the field is that the ball carrier is being ruled down by contact at the two yard line first down So that'll give New England first and goal. As the ball was coming out. Marvin Lewis looking at the replay on the big screen now to decide if he needs to challenge this play or not. He may challenge this, Mike. It looked like that ball may have been coming out as he was going down, but it doesn't look like it. Yes, yeah, it does. Challenge. So the flag has been thrown for a challenge. That's what I was watching Jaws as they were watching. And Marvin Lewis can't run because he has the ankle surgery from five weeks ago. So there's an assistant standing next to Marvin Lewis who ran down by the official and threw the red flag for him. That guy right there. And he was pretty quick, and that was a heck of a job. That is specialized labor. Absolutely. <laughs> you are the designated runner with, with the red flag, flag to get it out there in time. So the question on the fumble is, if it is a fumble, where did the ball come out, and then where did it go out? Because if it goes out of bounds at the end zone, so first thing they he's, might see is, is he still in bounds? Yes, he's still in bounds. Okay. He's reaching. The Starts to lose the ball a bit. Now, where does that ball eventually go out of bounds? It seems to be shy of the goal line. If that's the case, it is still Patriots ball right about where it is. Cincinnati's coaching staff is challenging the fact that the runner stepped out of bounds prior to the down by contact spot. And once you challenge like that, that means the whole thing is available to, available to be looked at. So they're looking at it in replay. Timeout. So Jerome Boger is in the voting booth checking out the high definition replay as Marvin Lewis challenges play to see where the runner Sammy Morris on this 49 yard run was. Did he go out of bounds there back at the 11 yard line on our initial look before commercial it didn't look like it and that came from this angle. You Looks can like see he's green inbounds. on either side of his foot. So he's that's in, inbounds. inbounds. He's inbounds all the way. Here I think the ball may be coming out a bit as he's going to the ground. He is definitely inbounds. Yep. Inbounds. You and can see you, the green. And as we go forward from that, there was a bean bag thrown by the official, which indicates that in the official's mind, the play called on the field was that, as we said, the ball was coming out and fumbled. Now the question is, after that, where does the fumble go out of bounds? So all of these things being looked at by the referee Boger in replay. In the meantime, Cincinnati is advertising to get new linebackers so that they can come <laughs> in for the next play they're since they're down to three. Down to three with the injury early on to Lamar Marshall and Madiu Williams, who made the tackle on Sammy Morris on that 49-yard run. He, too, was shaken up and moved his way to the locker room with the athletic training staff. Soon they'll be able to convene a players meeting in the locker room if they all keep walking off the field. Yeah, and you have to believe that if you're uh, Tom Brady, you're going to attack number 57, Dehani Jones, who is basically with the Bengals about 11 days right now. So he really can't understand entirely this system. So here's an inexperienced guy. So get after him. You saw Williams going off via replay, and here's the call. After reviewing the play, the rule on the field stands. The ball carrier did not step out of bounds prior to being ruled down by contact. Cincinnati will be charged its first team timeout. And they'll have one challenge remaining. So for Morris, it is six shy of his career long run, 55 yards. It's a gain of 49, and it's first and goal for the Patriots who have Junior Seau and Mike Vrabel in the game here in this goal line situation. And you remember last year, every time an opponent got inside the five on Cincinnati, every time, 18 times, touchdown. But that was last year. They stopped Baltimore when it mattered most in the opener. Seau's the fullback. Heath Evans is behind him, and Evans, the regular fullback, working toward the goal line in a hair shot. So it'll be second and goal. He's running the lead right behind Junior Seau, number 55. You'll see Heath Evans push it up in there, trying to get to that goal line. 
Did not make it, just short. Second and goal, Evans again airborne and stopped with forward progress. So the Bengals come up with two stops here from a yard and a half. We'll have third and goal. But this is where Lawrence Roney was very valuable. You had a more athletic back that could get over the top. You're looking at Heath Evans, 250 pounds, trying to leap over the top. Follows Junior Seau. He just doesn't get there. Great surge by the Bengals, front seven, or in the goal line situation, front eight. Third down. Brady to throw. Vrabel again. Touchdown again. This guy, you can truly say all he does is catch touchdowns. In the regular season, seven receptions, seven touchdowns for Mike Vrabel. And obviously augmenting that with a couple of receptions for touchdowns in the Super Bowl as well. And the play action right at number 57, Dahani Jones. You see him trailing Mike Vrabel. <laughs> Again, here's a guy been in, been with the Bengals about 11 days. That's linebacker the guy you're pick on linebacker at that point. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Kostowski on for the extra point. And it's 10 nothing. It speaks so much to the versatility of the New England Patriots roster. Bill Belichick even going back to when he was with Bill Parcells and the Giants and they used Lawrence Taylor as a tight end and on through the Cleveland days for Belichick always maximizing his roster using multiple players in multiple places and Vrabel's example there as he comes in and Junior Seau's in the backfield with him and uh, there's Vrabel at the tight end spot catching his ninth career touchdown seventh in the regular season. That's more than some first round draft picks have had in his career. Right. And he's a <laughs> linebacker. <laughs> well, this game will open up now. I think the Bengals have been much too conservative in their approach. They tried to establish the run. You know, when you have a Carson Palmer, a TJ Hoosman Zada, you know, you, a Chad Johnson, you got to attack with a pass. Tom Brady with that pass attempt got to 100 pass attempts on the year. Most completions in NFL history. First 100 passes of the season. Dave Craig and Jeff George there at 74. Out of the record book now because Tom Brady with his work tonight. 79 completions on exactly 100 passes of the season. Just a one hair under 80 percent. But that is the most completions in your first 100 passes to start a season in the history of the National Football League. And pass 100 became touchdown number 11 on the season for Brady. He's good. It's that simple. Oh, yeah. He's good. He's good. He's good. <laughs> and he's not bad looking either. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> I'll get out of the well, now if you'd like. <laughs> Where do you want to go on the field? <laughs> Skyler Green and Glenn Holt back for the Bengals who are struggling out of the gate here tonight. Down 10 in the early going. Here is Holt. Taken down at the 26 yard line by Mike Wright and here's Michelle. Well, you guys were talking about Tom Brady and all those pass completions. One of the big reasons is Randy Moss being here. And, you know, to get some perspective on Moss, I spent about a half hour on the phone with his former teammate, Chris Carter, today. They played in Minnesota together from 98 to 2001. And Chris believes that people don't want to hear the truth about Moss. He said there are a lot of good qualities in this guy. Number one, he knows how to work hard. Number two, he has a great football mind. He said he's almost got a brilliant football mind. And, Mike, I'll give you a few more nuggets from Chris later on. Okay, Michelle, two catches, 23 yards for Moss. Sammy Morris made the big play, another offseason acquisition on that drive. Palmer trying to find a first first down of the night and almost threw an interception. It was intended for Chad Johnson. Asante Samuel is there on the coverage. Let's go back to Michelle. Just more on Moss. Randy, uh, Chris Carter saying that Randy doesn't like to be in a position where he has to lead every day. So he called New England the perfect situation. He said for the first time, he has a quarterback in Tom Brady who is as talented as he is and has a high football IQ and their relationship is crucial. And he said Belichick is perfect for Moss. He won't get close enough to Randy but it'll put the fence around him so he knows his boundaries. It does sound ideal, doesn't it, Jaws? What a talented player he is. Bengals looking for that first airborne first down. The pass to the third receiver, Chapman, is caught. Antonio taken out of bounds at the 33-yard line. We'll have third and three coming up. It happened in front of Ellis Hobbs. Not to belabor that whole point, but when, when Moss got to the Patriots, it was not coincidental that they put his locker next to Tom Brady's. 
so that those two could talk football, talk football. You saw them standing together on the sideline before. That relationship has done more for Moss than certainly anything that happened to him in Oakland. Tom Brady certainly. is all about winning. That's it, period. He wants to win, and he's been pretty good at it. Third and three, back into the opening quarter. Palmer, pressure at his feet. They're going to rule that an incomplete pass that Palmer didn't come down, but he was on the way down. Twice in that drive, the man who caught the only touchdown of the quarter, Mike Vrabel, was putting on the pressure. Well, Vrabel doesn't have the touchdown and the sack to go in the first quarter. They got everything else. But a little magic from the Patriots in the opening quarter, leading by 10. The Dallas Cowboys, Green Bay Packers, and Indianapolis Colts joining the New England Patriots as undefeated teams. Pat's trying to join the prior three at 4-0. and oh. We start the second quarter here in Cincinnati. A first quarter where the Bengals ran 11 plays and had a total of 17 yards. And a Kyle Larson punt. 47 yards to Wes Welker at the 20. Hemmed in on the sideline, gets the most out of it. It's about a half dozen yards as Hernandez Jones makes his second special teams tackle. And Tom Brady brings him out after these first quarter numbers. There's a number there that is shocking. Passing yards from the Bengals, five. A total of 17 yards in that first quarter. That will not get it done. Only one first down. First quarter totally dominated by the New England Patriots. And Cincinnati has to play from behind by two scores already, which means all they're going to do is throw, right? I'm surprised it didn't start the game that way. With their linebacker injuries, if you're just joining us, since he only has three healthy ones right now, playing a lot of dime against the Patriots' spread. Brady feels the pocket collapse. There's the mobility Jaws talked about. A flag down as Sammy Morris takes it for a first down at the 40-yard line. Jonathan Joseph made the tackle. The flag in the backfield where they were trying to protect Brady. Holding offense number 72. 10-yard penalty. Replay first down. That's Matt Light who did our lineups for us. Seventh-year man out of Purdue. Been here for all three of the Belichick era Super Bowl championships. Working on Justin Smith. See right there, Mad Light trying to hold off Justin Smith. Here's Brady, feels the pressure, moves out, and there you see Matt Light grab Justin Smith jersey as Brady rolled outside the pocket, and you grab that jersey, you'll see it every time. Good head-to-head. -head. Missouri is the college for Justin Smith, Purdue for Matt Light, but they got to know each other. They have the same agent, so they prepared for the draft in 01. They worked out together. Screen, fall. What a job by Domata Peko, the second-year man out of Michigan State, to bring Falk down. Peko did a tremendous job of reading the screen. A lot of times, defense in these situations will have one of their defensive linemen aware of screen, look for the screen, anticipate the screen. Peko did a great job of reading it. Wouldn't you think that right now this is so important with Cincinnati because if they give up one more touchdown, they are almost out of it in the second quarter. This is where their defense... What's left of it has to make a stand. <laughs> no, I agree with you. Right, and, and right this, this, is, this is a defense that feeds on turnovers. They'd love to get one here. A lot of passing, a lot of out of the gun for Brady tonight. Pressured off the corner. Had to get rid of it quick. And the pass was incomplete. To Newton and one more time. Bringing the heat. Tom Boy, Brady not real happy. You'll see Tom Brady. You'll see the blitz coming off the corner. Woof, right in Tom Brady's face. He did not like it as Ndukwe came and gave him a shot. Well, he hasn't been hit in two years. <laughs> that's right, that's right. So it's sort of new to him. He doesn't him. like that. You wouldn't yeah, like I it either. It. That's a good point, Tony. Yeah. Yeah. Three sacks, six hits. Yeah. All season, third and long. And timeout taken by the Patriots. Third and long coming up. See if the defense can light a spark for the Bengals. About a five-minute walk from downtown in Fountain Square. Paul Brown Stadium, Cincinnati. Need to get to the 37 to keep the drive alive. 
Five in the pattern for Brady, who's pressured, throwing down the middle, throwing an interception to Leon Hall. One Michigan man picks off another Michigan man. Bengals ball in good field position. This is what fuels the Cincinnati Bengals. This is a turnover-oriented defense. Bill Belichick, Tom Brady, they all spoke about it in yesterday's meeting. This is a team you can't give them opportunities. Great opportunity right now for the Bengals to get back in this game. You'll see Brady right here. He forces his throw. He should not try to make this throw. Leon Hall did a great job of undercutting the route because he had help over the top. The six defensive back look for the Bengals. Necessity and formation with who the Patriots have on the field has worked well. Now will the Bengals take a shot down the field? They will run it on first down with Penny Watson. A gain of about eight yards. Swear. Cardell Cadillac Williams out for the season, injured right knee. As you know, the Bucks a pleasant surprise at three and one. Thank you, Steve. We'll keep us updated through the night. Kenny Watson runs for a first down. And Steve mentioned that Cadillac Williams injury. Both Bengals and Patriots fans will be interested to note, as Chris Mortensen reported, Bucks reached out to Corey Dillon, ex Bengal, ex Pat, not interested in returning to Tampa at this point. Cincy back to the no huddle. They huddled a lot in the first quarter. Watson left side run. Oh, about two and a half yards before Ty Warren. First round draft pick in 2003 for the Patriots made the tackle. It was interesting when we talked to Carson Palmer the other day. You look at the fact that the Bengals defense isn't all that good. He said, as far as we're concerned, we're sitting in a perfect situation. We're the underdogs. That's where we want to be right now. Well, they are back into a corner. There's no question about that. Not only at one and two, but down 10 nothing. A lot of pats at the line. Quick hit. First touch for Chad Johnson. Stiff arm Ellis Hobbs. What a run by Johnson. First and goal for the Bengals. Gain of 20. Eugene Wilson saved the touchdown. Excellent job by Chad Johnson. You'll see the quick throw out to the flat. They had a running play called, and they tagged that with a smoke. So if the corner is off, Carson Palmer will just stand up and throw the ball out to Chad Johnson. He breaks the tackle of Ellis Hobbs and takes it down to the two-yard line, or actually the one. Excellent read by Carson Palmer. Jeremy Johnson, the fullback, is part of the bunch on the right. He motions back to block for Watson. Palmer will throw. Touchdown. TJ Hushmanzada. The Brady pick turns into a touchdown. So now officially I'd say we've got a game. Took a little while, but now officially we've got a game because that's what Cincinnati can do. They can score in a hurry. They've got two great wide receivers and obviously a great quarterback. Well, they certainly tried to run the football. They ran it effectively in that series. They had the play action from the one-yard line. A wide open T.J. Hushman Zada in the back of the end zone. Shane Graham adds the extra point. A one-yard touchdown pass after Brady throws what's been a rare interception this year. Just his second. Carson Palmer's 10th touchdown pass of the year to T.J. Hushman Zada. Chad Johnson got him down there. New game. Somebody flipped the switch and woke everybody up in here. Get up, Tony. Oh, that was, hey, that's what they needed to do. They needed to score right away. And it all happened because of a rare Tom Brady mistake here in 07. And Carson Palmer made the most of it by checking to that play to get it to Chad Johnson. And boy, a one on one strong 20 yard gain to set up the touchdown catch for Hushman Zada. Willie Andrews, the up back, takes it and takes it to the 38 yard line as he's tackled by rookie tight end Daniel Coase. So after the mistake, what will Brady do to get the Pats offense back in gear? The highest scoring bunch in the National Football League, the New England Patriots have put up 38 in each of the first three games, beating the Jets in Buffalo in their division and sandwiching that with a win over San Diego at home. Sammy Morris, the lone back. 
Against a base 4-3 defense there, a gain of two, and here's Susie Culver. Well, Mike, Bengals defensive backs coach Kevin Coyle insisted that his guys were not intimidated by Tom Brady. And just to ensure that, he put together a tape of all of Brady's mistakes over the last two years. 26 interceptions, seven fumbles lost. Just to negate the myth that Brady walks on water, they watched it as a group so they could see the evidence he is human. Last series, the rookie, Leon Hall, comes up with the interception. How's that for building confidence? The Cincinnati defense, and we saw it turn over Baltimore a half dozen times on the opening Monday night. Brady completes it to Wes Welker right at midfield. It's a first down and a gain in nine yards. And Bill Belichick does some of the same on the other side, guys, to prepare his guys when they've been so good early in the year. He shows them that they aren't perfect either. And they all use the same phrase. Brady used it and Vrabel used it about how we are served a slice of, of Belichick's humble pie cooked to 375 degrees with a scoop of vanilla ice cream. 420 minutes of his day. He rips them all the time. At midfield, first and ten. Dante Stallworth with the catch, trying to spin away from the tackle. Only a gain of five. Well done by the rookie Leon Hall on the corner. The, the sense of discipline on the team obviously stems from Belichick. And the smartest thing he does, Jaws, is he goes after the biggest stars so that the biggest stars don't get the biggest heads. And the biggest stars, like Bruski, like Seau, like Brady, they accept that from Belichick and seem to revel in it. Well, he's won three Super Bowls. He's one of the greatest coaches of all time. The players buy into that. They believe him. They trust him. Second and five, Sammy Morris right into the teeth of the defense. Anthony Schlegel holding on, trying to bring him down, but Morris picks up the first down at the 40-yard line. Yes, but in a team dynamic, it helps if your leaders are on board with all of that. Absolutely Do you know what I mean? Right. I, I totally also, agree, and, 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 and I think Bill understands that. It doesn't work if a coach picks on the weakest link. It doesn't work, because then players will tend to defend them. But when you pick on the strongest guys and they buy in, that's why you win. So you better have thick skin in that Patriots locker room. Patriots jumped out to a 10-0 lead. Bengals have just responded off a turnover on the most recent New England drive. And here is Morris running for about eight yards to the 32-yard line. If you're just flipping over, Lawrence Maroney out for this game with a groin injury. So they turn it to Sammy Morris out of Texas Tech. Maroney was figured to be the feature back once Corey Dillon was not retained and went into somewhat retirement. But Morris has uh, really shared some carries. He's had 11, 10, and 12 carries in the first three games. A guy Belichick saw in the division all seven years of his career, and he likes what he's about, so he signed him. Two yards there to the 30. He was in Miami and Buffalo before that to start his career. Dahani Jones bringing him down there. Didn't Belichick say he killed us a number of times in a number of places? <laughs> yeah. And if I had the opportunity to get him. And that's what Belichick does. He identifies people who have hurt him over the years. If he gets the opportunity to bring them here, you know, if he can't beat them, join them. He's... It's effective. He, he's controversial. He's also very smart. Morris's numbers punctuated by the 49-yard carry. They led to a touchdown at the end of the first quarter, and he picks up a first down there to the 26-yard line. Sammy Morris, to speak of what you talked about, Tony, playing for the Dolphins against the Patriots week 14 last year at a career-high 123 yards, and it certainly opened the eyes of Belichick. Well, can you believe it? Another Bengal is shaken up, and it's another linebacker down to three healthy linebackers. Landon Johnson is on a knee. He's Ooh. the only linebacker who's dressed right now and healthy who's been with Marvin Lewis since the preseason. Two sore Johnsons, then Landon and Rudy out as well. Landon Johnson holding a towel to that left eye. The Bengals hope he'll be back because right now Cincinnati has two healthy linebackers left. You'll see Landon Johnson scrape. Comes off the tackle, makes the play, the play. Led with his helmet. And Sammy Morris's knee lands on his head. So the Bengals have to go with a, a little gimmick defense, if you will. Once again, back to that six defensive back set. And Sammy Morris runs to the 22-yard line. Ron, I've, you've seen a heck of a lot more football than we ever have. I've never seen a game where a team is down to two 
linebackers, and that's it. Yeah, I, I watch 10 to 12 games a week over at NFL Films, and very infrequently you see when first and 10 in the second quarter, teams are playing nickel and dime on defense. Especially when a team is running it down your throat on this drive, it's been mostly runs, eight runs, two passes. Left side, Sammy Morris. First down across the 20-yard line. That's Madiu Williams, who was banged up earlier, coming back in the game. The safety being carried by Morris. So the Patriots, instead of those four receiver looks and the spread stuff, kind of lining up and banging with a team that's banged up. Well, that's why they brought Kyle Brady. And Kyle Brady is really, uh, you know, listed as a tight end. He's like a third tackle. I mean, yeah, he's a road grader up front. He moves people off the line of scrimmage. Then they complement Brady with Benjamin Watson. And they could run the football on anybody, let alone a depleted linebacking core. Right now, five defensive linemen in the game for the Bengals. And not surprising, the Bengals are a bit disorganized, call timeout. Well, you talk about the fact that they only have two linebackers. One of them is Dahani Jones, who got here this morning, right? No, I mean, he, he was, just, he he's just been, got here a week yeah, ago. He's been, he's been there 12 days. So he doesn't, he can't even know all the all the sets that they have and all the plays that they run. Yeah. It, in fact, when he came in, Paul Gunther, who's an assistant coach on the defensive side, told him he's like been living with Dahani Jones. I mean, he's trying to indoctrinate him into the system. So. He expected him to be maybe like the fifth or sixth guy that may go in. All of a sudden, he's, you know, he's going to have to play most of this game. Well, our production meeting with the Bengals on Saturday, our room was kind of here and the Bengals locker room was over here. So Dahani stuck his head in to yeah. say hi. And I said, you just want to say hi to people whose names you know because the guys in your locker room, right. you don't know all those guys yet. But he's only been here 12 days. Anthony Schlegel, the other linebacker, was cut by the Jets in the final cuts. And he came out of a system where he played 3-4. So that's... And part their, of the confusion. their defensive statistics are so terrible with the players they liked enough to start. Now they're not playing those players. Well, they're playing four down linemen, one linebacker, and six defensive backs right now. First and ten, the Pats line them up and run them. And they run Sammy Morris again for a gain of about five yards. Marvin Lewis made his name as a coordinator of the National Football League with defense with the Baltimore Ravens. Their fabulous record-setting Super Bowl championship defense has yet to build a defense here that is anywhere in the neighborhood of that other defense. And tonight, it's a team injury depleted that is just getting run over. Well, they're going to have to bowl their backs here if they're going to stay in this ball game. Moss in motion. Running again is fall. Good open field arm tackle by last year's first round pick. Jonathan Joseph out of South Carolina. Well, have third down coming up. Pats can get a first down at the three. It's interesting that you mentioned Marvin Lewis because when they brought him here, they had some offensive pieces in place. They had Hushman Zada. They had Chad Johnson. I believe they had Rudy Johnson. The expectation was that Marvin would build a defense as he had in Baltimore. That has not happened in now his fifth year. Huge play right now for that defense. They've run it eight times in a row. Dante Stallworth and Wes Walker will be at the top of your screen. Moss at the bottom. Kevin Falk the back. And Brady throwing for Moss. Goes up and gets it. Randy Moss, sixth touchdown of the season. Wow. You think that trade was good with Oakland where they got Randy Moss for a fourth round pick? Yeah, I believe you it was that's a very good deal. Steals of the century. It's, yeah. it's like deal or no deal. Yes, let's deal for that. Randy Moss, six touchdown catches already. Look at this throw by Tom Brady. This is a laser. This is the back shoulder throw. When you see Jonathan Joseph in perfect position, he pushes to the corner, sees the ball near, plants that back foot, and just uses six foot four frame to go over Joseph. Excellent throw by Tom Brady. And you can see they are on the same page. And, and getting Randy Moss is one of those things. People saw it, their eyes lit up. They said, would he be right for the Patriots? He's been perfect for the Patriots. He is one of the reasons with the deep vertical throws that Brady can complete to Moss. He's one of the reasons why people say, can they go 16 and 0? Can they run it out? Because he's the best receiver that Tom Brady has ever had. And he's one of the top receivers on Monday Night Football. Jerry Rice has all the Monday Night Football marks, but Brady to Moss makes it 12 touchdowns on Monday Night Football for Randy Moss. 
in 12 games, averaging one per game. And, and you can see that the same page and what these guys have come to know about each other. Half foot advantage on Jonathan Joseph, the corner. And Jaws not just throwing it to that back shoulder, but throwing it up high. Joseph was pinned, had no chance. And the Patriots take the 10 point lead. Now, Mike, we talk about quarterback play, and I've always said the most overlooked aspect of playing the position is accuracy. People talk about size, strength, you know, where they can throw the ball, mobility. Can you throw the ball into tight areas? Obviously, by that throw to Randy Moss shows you Tom Brady can throw into tight areas, and he's willing to throw into tight areas. And even more importantly, Tony, he trusts Randy Moss. I mean, yes, that, he does. that's not a throw that you'd make to a guy that you don't feel comfortable throwing the ball to. Well, Those can be intercepted. And he lockers next to him, and he sits next to him on the bench. There are a lot of great receivers that right. don't sit near the quarterback. A lot of great quarterbacks that aren't with the receivers. Those guys are right together. And is anything in the National Football League working better than them right now? Uh, no. Uh, no. No. Thank you. Gostowski with the kickoff. And Holt is taken down. 25 yard line. We're talking about Randy Moss on Monday Night Football and his legacy over the years. Go back to the very first Monday night appearance for Moss nearly nine years ago tonight, October 5 of 98, on a wet night in Green Bay. Randall Cunningham was throwing it. Randy, part of that superb rookie season, led the NFL that year with 17 touchdown catches, offensive rookie of the year. And as the Vikings offense continued to roll through that era, they were a big part of uh, the premier teams in the league on Monday Night Football, and Moss always found a way to shine and adds to it tonight. Palmer has to get back to work, back down 10. Benny Watson, 13 yards, and a first down. Excellent job by Carson Palmer. He tried to come out to the right side. No one was open there. He came to his third receiver. That's staying with your progression. The good thing for Carson, the offensive line gave him time to process the information. This is something teams do all the time during their preparation during the week. Four minutes on your own 20-yard line, bring it down the field and get something and use most of the clock. Palmer complete to Chapman. He's at the 45-yard line. Again, Antonio Chapman, 50 year out of Cincinnati, is the third wide receiver. Tad Perry's out with a hamstring injury. Glenn Holt did play well against Cleveland, but they all have been very little in at the absence of Chris Henry. Nine touchdowns in 06, but suspended for at least the first half of the NFL regular season for violating the personal conduct policy of the league. Kenny Watson runs it to midfield. First down. Clearly right now, the Bengals going with their no huddle speed offense. Isn't that, isn't that sugar huddle where you kind of stand around? They have picked up the tempo right now. The Patriots have gone to their 4-3 defense. We're going to see Vrabel down. They're basically trying to get after Carson Palmer with their four down line. When you include Vrabel when he puts his hand on the ground. Chad Johnson's at the bottom of the screen working on Asante Samuel. Pocket closing. Palmer completes to Hushmanzada. 11 yards. First down, Randall gave the tackle. This is kind of the fireworks we expected. You know, yeah. two great quarterbacks punching, counter punching, going up and down the field. Well, San Diego's offense you thought would be dynamic and threatening. They were not at any time against the Patriots or really almost at any time this season. This is the best look the Pats defense has gotten in the first month of the season. Chad Johnson, great control of his body to slow down, lean back, and get it. First down at the two-minute warning. What a magnificent catch by Chad Johnson. The ball slightly overthrown. He reaches back, like you said, in body control. Tony's off to PTI with Mr. Wilbon. And to become a linebacker by the second <laughs> half. <laughs> See the next Brett Favre and what's wrong with the Chargers, among other things. Bengals trying to get it back to a one-score game. Operate on first down from the 21. Two-minute mark, they'll run. Kenny Watson, no gain. Oh, Chad Johnson made that really nice catch a moment ago, and then in the ensuing timeout, it was over for a couple of words of Bill Belichick. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Bill's actually smiling. He said, how'd you catch that ball? That's an incredible control of your body and stagging with your hands. Asante Samuel's going, I can't believe you got that ball. We should point out, Bill had Chad in the Pro Bowl and was effusive in his praise for Loved Chad's him. ability Loved and personality him. when we visited with the Patriots coach last night. It was so wonderful to hear Bill talk about him the way he did. He loved him. 
Final 80 seconds of this first half, and Palmer intercepted by Asante Samuel. Brought down at the three, so both quarterbacks have made mistakes and thrown interceptions. Glenn Holt, that third receiver spot, falling as he was in the pattern. I believe it was a misread. Carson Palmer and Chad Johnson were not on the same page. You'll see Chad Johnson release. Carson Palmer expected him to come to the inside. He went straight up the field. The ball is already out of Carson's hands. You see right there, and Chad takes it up the field. They were not seeing the secondary with the same eyes on that particular yep. play. Consequently, the interception by Asante Samuel. Asante Samuel did a great job of peering back in the backfield and reading Carson Palmer. We saw Palmer hold his head after the interception. Exactly along the lines of what you were thinking, Ron. So the Patriots will take a knee. Try to take it to the locker room here. It's 17-7, and you see the give and take with Palmer and Johnson, who are very often are on the same page, talking about what each saw. Our game track is Tom Brady with two touchdowns, including another one to Mike Vrabel, seven for seven receptions and scores in the regular season. And Randy Moss on the last drive caught his sixth touchdown, tying Plexico Burris most in the NFL. Palmer has thrown a touchdown to TJ Hushmanzada, but just threw that interception. Chad Johnson has made two big plays in this game for his 39 yards. But other than that, he and Hushmanzada have been relatively quiet, combining on four catches in the first half as Chad and Carson continue their heated exchange on the miscommunication at the end of the half. It's not a good way to go into the half with your quarterback and outstanding wide receiver not seeing eye to eye. Well, their chance to get it straight, figure it out because they get the ball to start the third quarter. At the break, New England 17 looking for 4-0. Cincinnati seven looking to avoid one and three. Here's Chris Berman and the Toyota halftime show. Box 20 along with Bruce Springsteen our Monday night artist tonight you look at Cincinnati which is all lit up this evening to show off the Queen City Bengals almost got back to within three of the Patriots however an interception late in the half changed things Cincinnati gets the ball first trailing 17 7 as we wrap up week four of the NFL season we'll hear from Michelle Tafoya and Susie Kalber on the sideline in a minute Mike Tirico Ron Jaworski Tony Kornheiser up here in the booth We'll see if Carson and Chad got things ironed out at halftime. I'm sure they went behind closed doors and talked about it, Mike. It was, they didn't leave the field uh, like they were real happy with each other. Deep kickoff by Gostowski. No return by Holt. Here's the play in question. There's no question when Carson Palmer saw the safety go to center field. He had the one-on-one -on -one route. Asante Samuel on Chad Johnson. He expected the in route. He did not get it. That's where the breakdown was communication. Chad goes over the top. Asante Samuel reads the route, jumps inside, makes a terrific interception. You'll see Palmer right here. He's expecting a slant route. He does not get it. But Johnson went over the top. But excellent job by Asante Samuel reading what Carson Palmer wanted to do. Clearly a communication breakdown between Palmer and Johnson. Palmer or Samuel making his second start. Comes up with his second INT of the season, 18 on his career and first down begins with Palmer pressured getting rid of it incomplete here Susie well in regard to that play that Jaws was analyzing Carson and Chad left the field analyzing it quite passionately and by the time they got to the tunnel Chad was arguing his point he was adamant I know what the play was I know how to run it so Jaws as the quarterback had he settled something like that well it's very difficult you know because Chad did not read it the same way uh, that Carson read it so clearly you have to see the defensive coverage with the same eyes once again they didn't at some point you got to draw a line in the sand and go forward because it's 17 7 and you get the ball next Palmer looked Johnson's way comes to Hushman Zada who broke open TJ gets the first down at the 32 yard line pickup of a dozen in front of Eugene Wilson so the big Bengals stars just four catches for Johnson and Hushman Zada they had 
54 catches combined in the first three games of the regular season. So a little bit under production, but as you would expect against an always well schooled Patriots defense. And Kenny Watson taking all the carries but one with Rudy Johnson out with a strained hamstring and Jarvis Green comes in to make the tackle. The Austin Patriots two. have done a real nice job, Mike, of trading pressure with their down four linemen. You see him cave the pocket right here. Adelius, Adelius Thomas with the sack. Palmer on a rollout. Pressure in his face once again. Incomplete. Once again, mush rush. Compress the pocket. People around Carson Palmer. Second down in the pocket with time to the tight end, Richie Kelly, across midfield with the Dallas Thomas in coverage. First down, Kenny Watson threw a nice block for protection. So what's interesting about this is even if Carson Palmer's having a bad night, he's about two passes away from having a touchdown <laughs> at any right. time. Because he's a very, very good quarterback. And he has outstanding wide receivers and a big sure. play right there from Reggie sure. Kelly, who's only caught three balls coming into this game. That was a huge reception. After the gain of 21, back in Patriots territory, Watson tries to get to the edge, keeps the play alive. Good nifty run by Kenny Watson. Flag down. Antonio Chapman was blocking. Holding offense number 83. 10-yard penalty. Replay first down. And while blocking, he was holding. Again, Chapman, the third wide receiver. Tad Perry, Glenn Holt, Skyler Green all in the mix, and nobody's been able to fill the bill the way Chris Henry did. There's Rudy Johnson on the sideline. A lot of fits and starts on the Cincinnati offensive line with different injuries. Levi Jones did start tonight. Hobbled off the field in the first half. Andrew Whitworth, who started the first three regular season games, back in the lineup. First and 17. You heard everybody else scream. There's Watson into the waiting arms of Teddy Bruschi at midfield, getting all but one of the penalty yards back. Yeah, it's probably fair to say, when we concentrate a lot on the Patriots' offense and how great it's been, they're number one in total defense after three games, number two in passing defense, number three in scoring defense, number five in rushing defense. So they're great on both sides. <laughs> I mean, you know, Palmer's really going to have to light it up to, to beat them. I'm sure that sounds obvious, but, but they are that good. You have to have a great night against them. On both sides of the ball. Yeah. You're right, Tony. Palmer throwing for Chapman on the sideline, incomplete. You know, it was interesting talking to Bill Belichick yesterday about how he designs his game plan. Each week, it is a different game plan. And there's no question tonight, it was a coverage-based defensive game plan. They're rushing four down linemen or a linebacker, only bringing four, keeping seven in coverage. That's the ultimate respect when you have T.J. Hoosman, Zada, yep. and Chad Johnson at the wide receiving core. Some teams don't have the ability with their personnel to change the game plan week to week. Oh, they have versatile personnel. There's no question of that up in New England. Daniel Coates, rookie tight end, is the motion man. Palmer looks to him. He couldn't hang on. And the rookie out of BYU with the drop brings the punting unit on for Cincinnati. So a couple of first downs. They gain 30 yards in the drive, but they kick it away in part because of this. Yeah, tough catch for Daniel Coates. So it would have been short of the first down. But what you hope for is that Teddy Bruschi might miss a tackle and Daniel Coates could get for uh, get up field for another 10 yards. Kyle Larson will try to pin the Patriots inside the 20. Flag down, pick 37, Welker fair catch to 13. And we'll check the marker. Mike, you know, we talked about the impact of uh, the loss of linebackers. Get right to it in a second here. The impact is on special teams. A lot of teams love to use their backup linebackers on special teams. Illegal formation, kicking team. Number 16 did not line up on the end of the line of scrimmage. The five-yard penalty will be added to the end of the kick. When Holt came in to help protect, didn't get himself up on the line. 
Back in Cincinnati, 17-7, the Patriots looking to go 4-0 on this 07 season. Kyle Brady, the backup tight end, is in there to block, trying to block for Sammy Morris. No gain. Chased down by Domata Peko, and here's the show. Well, guys, I spoke with Bill Belichick at halftime, and he told me that Cincinnati has shown its explosiveness. He told his team at halftime, we have to remain focused on every single play. And referring to Tom Brady's interception, just his second of this season, Belichick said, since his defense is turnover driven, we have to take better care of the football. Mike? Michelle, he made a point to his team during the week that Cincinnati's defense last four years leads the NFL in forced turnovers. Kevin Falk the back to Bart Gaffney as a receiver. And the pass is caught by Falk. He's three yards shy of the first down. Sammy Mars in for Lawrence Maroney. A scratch tonight with a groin injury. And you look at the numbers for Brady. Solid except for the pick. Moss catching the one yard touch, seven yard touchdown. And Mars not only 13 carries, one big one in there for 49 yards on the first touchdown drive. He also carried eight consecutive times on the drive that was capped off by the Randy Moss touchdown. Falk. Pitching it to Wes Welker on the reverse with a ton of blockers on this side. Welker keeps it alive and gets past midfield for a first down. Brady threw a block on that. How about that, Jules? Did you ever throw a block? When many, you were many, many. I knocked a lot of guys out of bounds with my blocks, Tony. <clears throat> Gain of 27 <laughs> yards for the very versatile Welker. And not just Brady getting in the way, but Russ Hochstein as well, the right guard. Actually, Brady tried to throw a block. He missed it. He missed it, but he did try. Yeah. You got to give him credit for that. Excellent call by Josh McDaniels, the offensive quarter for the Patriots. You know, in that situation, you're going to have a fast, slow defense. He countered it. You saw the versatility that Welker has shown against the Patriots before. Now Brady goes back up top to Randy Moss to the 31 yard line. First down in a game of 16. What Brady can do now is personal foul. Flag down. Unnecessary roughness. Defense number 98. Blow to the head of the quarterback. 15 yard penalty after the end of the run. First down. The flag on Brian Robinson will bring the Patriots into the red zone at the 16. And you'll see the late hit right to Tom Brady's face. Brian Robinson flagged for the foul, but I was saying right now Brady can become surgical in his approach. He's got the running game going. He's got the linebacking core of the Bengals in disarray. The play action can be very effective now. It'll hold the linebackers. It'll open up voids behind those linebackers. Started the night with four healthy ones. The numbers have not improved. Jenny Marsh to the 10-yard line. Here's Susie. Mike, this defense could be tired. Unprecedented injuries to the Bengals linebacking core. The fan run began in training camp, continued through tonight. Back up, Lamar Marshall knocked out on the first series, a left Achilles. He will not be back. Remember, only four linebackers dressed for this game. And then in the second quarter, the only starter to dress, Landon Johnson, taken to the locker room with an eye injury. He's questionable. Marvin Lewis didn't seem all that concerned, but he did expect Landon to be back, and he's still in the locker room. She's in the run here inside with Morris goes nowhere. We'll have third down coming up. And Jaws, as we were looking at the start of this quarter, we saw Robert Gathers make the play. He was lining up at a linebacker in that very first set of this third quarter. Yeah, and Robert Gathers is one of those defensive ends that occasionally will drop into coverage on their zone blitz scheme. So at least he has some experience of playing that linebacker position. Well, when we were here for the open against Baltimore, he had eight tackles, a sack, a pick. A pass breakup, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery. So he's versatile, so yeah. why not? That's and a, and the pick was downfield. Get a first down at the six. Ball pushing forward in the arms of Justin Smith, getting very close to that first down. We'll check the spot. You see in, in this drive, Welker had that big run on the reverse, and Moss caught a pass for nice yardage. What is it about putting on the Patriot uniform that makes you like when you put on the Yankee uniform in the old days when John Wooden coached UCLA when you put on the UCLA uniform it takes players from other places who have been good they they're better here yeah. they're better well, th there's a reason for that Tony this is a single-minded organization 
Their objective is to win football games. They don't care about a lot of the peripheral things that affect other teams. They get players that want to play well, football, that love the game that of football. Line, they are not sentimental. They are cheap sometimes. They get rid of people. Lawyer Malloy, Ty Law, Willie McGinnis, Adam Vinatieri, David Gibbons, Dion Branch. And what happens? They still win because the players that come here, they are ready to win. A foot and a half needed. They'll go for it. You agree with this, George? Yeah, I agree with you. But remember this, Tony, the average career in the National Football League is about three and a half years. So there's a natural attrition in personnel anyway, but they get rid of guys before they start descending. Moss is up at the top. A run with Sammy Morris. First down, touchdown, New England. Big Benjamin Watson with a strong block to help free Morris for his third rushing touchdown on the season. They ran power to the left side. Matt Light, Logan Mankins, Heath Evans do a great job of clearing the hole for Sammy Morris. Dan Copen was the injured Patriot on that touchdown. We'll step out before the kick. Bumming in Bengal land because they're watching the Patriots put on another clinic drives of 66 65 62 and they're an 81 yard drive Sammy Morris doing a lot of the work 110 yards for Lawrence Maroney uh, scratch tonight with a groin injury the Gostowski extra point is blocked but still finds its way through and it's a 24 to 7 New England lead. Even when Cincinnati blocks a kick, it still goes through. Special teams can't get to break. Jonathan Joseph got a hand on it. Over here in downtown Cincinnati, that 81-yard drive for the Patriots puts them up 17. It's the sixth time in 10 drives New England's gone 80 yards or more, and that includes the kneel-down drive at the end of the half. So six out of 10 times they've gone over 80 yards this year. The league average is 12% to start inside the 20 and go all the way for a score. Glenn Holt brought down at the 34-yard line. Sports Center 30 and 30. Steve Lee. Michael, thank you. The seventh one-game playoff to decide a playoff spot. The Rockies and Padres, they are 6-6 in the ninth inning. Matt Holiday, a key RBI single, also had a key misplay in the outfield. As for NBA news, Amari Stoudemire of the Suns, he'll undergo arthroscopic knee surgery. They're calling it minor. He's expected to be sidelined only two to three weeks. Stay current, ESPN News, Sports Center after football. Mike, back to you. They called minor, but off the microfracture surgery of a Mike year Oga. plus ago, raises concern in the Valley of the Sun. They Good. called the Greg Oden for minor before they went in. Now he's out for the whole year. Palmer back to the air. His pass complete to Hushmanzada. First down and again at 10. Of course, Palmer comes off the 2005 season where they won the division. But in the playoff game, his knee was injured. Picked right up last year statistically. Tonight, Hushmanzada and Chad not able to get their normal big numbers. Yeah, and the key is not only the receiving, but the number of yards. They haven't got the explosive play this evening. This guy's on the other side of the ball, you know. Yeah, they're good. <laughs> On first down, back to Kenny Watson. Nice opening for Watson into the secondary. So both backup running backs with the headline guys, Lawrence Maroney and Rudy Johnson, missing. These two running backs have more than held up their end of the bargain. Yeah, Kenny Watson does have some explosiveness. He sees the cutback there, weaving through the defensive line into the second level of the defense. Nice run, good vision. Gain of 16. You see Watson's four yard per carry average. Bengals will be no huddle, you would assume, the rest of the night. Watson gains about three there. You know, even at Penn State, it was before Larry Johnson became a big-time runner at Penn State, and then we know what he's done with the Chiefs. But Omar Easy and Eric McCoo, names familiar to college football fans, they were running backs ahead of Kenny Watson. He was in that third down back receiving back type mode there. He's never gotten his chance to be the big guy here in Cincinnati. And we mentioned his best NFL games have been as a backup to Stephen Davis when Davis was hurt in Washington during the second season in the league for Watson. Incomplete for Kelly. Fans want a flag. There's one down, but not down where the pass reception was at the O-line.
It's against Cincinnati and Boger is asking Belichick do you want the penalty or do you want the incompletion. Personal foul chop block offense number 33 and the right tackle 15 yard penalty replays second down. You're wondering how can it be two guys Kenny Watson and Andrew Whitworth. That's one of those jaws where if you're engaged up high you can't come down low on a guy and get his legs. That is correct. Watson we'll right there. You see the engagement and Watson comes underneath. That is a chop block. Number 75, Scott Kustra, was engaged. And you saw Watson chop him down. Illegal. Took out Ty Warren's legs. The second and long. The out for Hushmanzada. Toe tap at the sideline to get the first down. TJ does. At the 30. You can't throw the football any better than that. Asante Sanders did a terrific job of reading the route. You see the arc on the football over the outstretched fingers of Asante Samuel. Hujmanzada does a great job of tiptoeing along the sideline, getting the first down for the Bengals. Pretty much a must score situation for the Bengals who got movement at the right tackle spot by Kushka. Offense number 75. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Junior Seau attacked the line of scrimmage like he was coming on a blitz, then backed out, forcing one of the Bengals offensive linemen to jump. You'll see was Scott Kustra, number 75, flinched before the snap, blocking on Vrabel. Bengals penalty free in the first half. Five flags here in the third quarter. They look good running the ball with Watson to the 26-yard line. You know, Tony mentioned a moment ago that the Patriots do have players on their side stopping Cincinnati, good defenders, and it's a Patriot defense of very big names like Seau and Vrabel, Asante Samuel with his 10 picks, but it's a defense that's also missing a couple of big names and still doing a good job. Thanks for that breaking news, Tony, that they have a defense out there, too. <laughs> trying to keep you on your toes. <laughs> Second down, Palmer throwing its complete to uh, Hushmanzada, a couple of yards shy of the first down. Here are some people that are missing. Rodney Harrison is missing. Uh, he's suspended four games, so he comes back this coming week. Richard Seymour has been out six games with a knee injury. You would have thought that the Patriots would be at their most vulnerable early in the season. Not only these two people lost on defense, but all the ramifications of the Spygate issue. You'd have thought they could be beaten early, maybe not late. Well, we're in the fourth game right now, and they look to be a terrific team. Imagine how much better they'll get. Belichick took time out. There were 12 Patriots on the field. Before look at that. him. He's in agony. He's winning the game. He's rubbing his head. He's in agony. Watch the win, Tony. He wants to win. They'll be all slathered up, Michael. See you Monday night, 830 <laughs> Eastern from beautiful Western New York for the Bills and the Cowboys. It'll be a blast. Third and a couple. Pressure comes. Palmer's pass is tipped as he's knocked down and incomplete. Fourth down field goal attempt coming. Bruski gets in there along with Colvin. Just a terrific job of total blitz, collapsing the pocket, man to man. Oh, wow. Bruski, he got way up there. Bruski coming over the top. Watch this. Bruski leaps into Carson Oof. Palmer, tips Great the play. ball. He had. Chad Johnson all alone on the outside would have been the completion of Bruce in here. They what? want them to go for this. Yeah, no, you go they, for the field goal. I'm here. saying the oh. fans are booing. They were. It doesn't make sense. He's second most accurate kicker in NFL history and the active most accurate kicker in the NFL Shane Graham. Kind of feels like a Pyrrhic victory on that drive. Not a lot of excitement for that field goal, but it still gets them within two scores. Bill Belichick and the Patriots trying to get a fourth Super Bowl here this year, uh, trying to get off to a 4-0 start, of course, in the crosshairs of the NFL headlines through the first couple of seasons after the fine by the National Football League. $500,000 for Belichick, quarter of a million dollars for the Patriots organization. The aftermath of the videotaping of the New York Jets defensive coaches signaling in plays, trying to get that for future use. No competitive advantage was gained by the Patriots of the league with the fine. 
And the draft pick that will be lost coming up for this year. And after the tackle, and the Patriots taking over the 29. Here's Ted Bruschi talking to us about the Patriots' approach after the Spygate incident. It is what it is. I think the you know Bill has made his statements and he's expressed his disappointment in disappointment in the decision on the on the punishment placed down from the commissioner. All we all we can do is really move on about it because I know one thing: once you win championships in this league, no one can take anything away from you. That feeling I got from all of those three Super Bowls, no one can ever take any of that away from me, no matter what is said. Even though the Patriots' future is the penalty with the money in the present and the first round pick if they make the playoffs or a two and three if they do not make the playoffs. A lot of the current players felt the sting with what was said about their accomplishments. Falk to carry, tackled by Dexter Jackson. First down gain of 13. Here's the end of the game now with San Diego, which occurred about three days after the whole Spygate thing broke. You see the players hugging Belichick personally. I asked him the other day as the son of a coach and a coach his whole adult life, how he felt about that, and he said it was special. He doesn't use, he doesn't say much, and it really touched his heart, and it meant a lot to the players as well, which we'll get to after this play. Four receivers and Kevin Falk. And Brady with a flag down, goes down. Tom had been sacked only three times all year, succumbs to the pressure of a fellow Super Bowl MVP, Dexter Jackson. Outside, defense, number 28, five-yard penalty, replay first down. Helps you get your sack when you start offside. It was Dexter. Slight advantage. As an example of what I was talking about, Mike Vrabel said how much the players put into it, and he said, but Bill puts the most in. It was our way of showing him how we feel. There are players saying they only win because of this circumstance. That was frustrating. He didn't like when people said, how do you feel about cheating? They felt maybe people thought the victories were tainted, and they don't feel that way. The flag makes it first and five. And Falk will run to the left and get another first down at the 47. And here's Michelle Tafoya. Yeah, well, when I conducted that interview with Teddy Bruschi, I asked him, what don't we see in Bill Belichick as we're watching him on the sidelines that you all see that makes you want to follow this guy? Because clearly they're very loyal to their coach. And he said he never strays from what he believes in. He never falls off course. His focus is always there. It's a constant focus on what we have to do the next day, the upcoming challenge, how we meet that challenge and overcome that opponent. So he said when he's leading that strongly, it's hard not to follow. That's why you get so many veteran players who buy into being coached up significantly. Empty backfield with his 14-point lead. Brady's throw over the head of the umpire caught by Benjamin Watson, and he does prefer Benjamin. Three yards shy of the first down. I think part of the piece, though, is that people know that the Patriots, or they feel the Patriots, are smarter than the other clubs. They see for many years they're better than the other clubs. And I think that raised the ire of fans and maybe other players because they said, why would the Patriots of all teams have to resort to doing this sort of taping? And I, it, it came crashing down on Belichick's head. It did. Saw the owner, Robert Kraft. With those Super Bowl ring cufflinks. In the 40, Brady, quick with those hips, opens up to Moss for the first down at the 34-yard line. And we mentioned the fines and the loss of a first rounder. The NFL then asked the Patriots to turn over any documentation they may have had, any files on other things that they may have. And uh, not only did the Patriots do that, the NFL didn't add a further penalty and destroyed all of the, yeah. quote, evidence, unquote, that they got. And they made very clear in the commissioner's statement they felt that no competitive advantage was gained because the videotaping was for further use for the Patriots. So that's why the suspension, or not the lack of a suspension, but the fines, the first round pick loss potentially was the penalty. Pass for Dante Stallworth incomplete. Jonathan Joseph on the coverage. It's, uh, it's also good to point out that Robert Kraft gave Bill Belichick a game ball after the San Diego Chargers game. 
and everybody in that locker room supported that. I wonder, do you think they're tainted, Michael Jaws? Do you think, not that the previous victories are tainted, do you think Belichick's reputation is tainted by this? You know, I, I really don't. I, I think there's a single-mindedness that this organization has. It's all about winning for them. I, I, you know, there's going to be people out there that are going to remain skeptical, but I just love the way they approach it. To them, it's all about winning. It's a second down, and here's Brady. Complete to Moss. Try to make his man miss, and he's a couple of yards shy of the first down as the Patriots take it to the 26-yard line. Brady, 18 of 24 passing here tonight. And you'll see Randy Moss singled up on Delta O'Neill. Pushes to the outside, does a nice job of working back to the outside. Excellent throw by Tom Brady. Throws away from the defender. This will spin down to the end of the third quarter. Fans getting all lathered up for the defense trying to get a third to two stop. And Mr. Cool, Mr. Magazine cover, Mr. Photo spread, just strolling <laughs> Tony, all over the floor. Tony's quarter. boy! <laughs> Are you suggesting I have a man crush on uh, you? Yeah, I am. <laughs> have you seen those photos? Have you seen the girlfriends? Come on! He is the boss of New England sports. To the fourth quarter, Patriots by 14. <laughs> Part of our open tonight from Jamie Foxx. Love wow. that. Dreamy eyes. You gotta love what Jamie Foxx does that. We go to the fourth quarter on the banks of the Ohio River here in Cincinnati. Mike Tirico, Tony Kornheiser, Ron Jaworski, Susie Kalber, Michelle Tafoya, Tom Brady. Six incompletions, 150 yards, a couple of touchdowns. Earlier tonight, setting the NFL record for the highest completion percentage in his first 100 passes to start a season at 79%. Third and two and a quick snap. And a flag down as Sammy Morris is taken down by Anthony Schlegel. And let's check the flag. A second flag comes down. Is too many players? Yep. 12 men, defense, five yard penalty, results in a first down. Now, I understand that you've got only a couple of linebackers and you're moving people around, but you should never, ever, ever have a flag like that at after. the start of a quarter. Yeah, yeah. That's un a after. unbelievable. After three minutes over there to figure out what oh. personnel package would go on. Well, is it possible they petitioned no. the league to get an extra guy because they were so <laughs> depleted tonight and they were just waiting for Goodell to say, yeah. okay, play 12. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't think that happened, Tony. <laughs> Good try. He, they should petition for 12 tonight. They, they certainly are overmatched right now. A drive that started at the 29. Now down to the 21. The man of the gun. Brady's pass is knocked down by jumping Justin Smith. First round pick of 2001. Justin Smith did an excellent job of reading Tom Brady's eyes, much like Tony does. Uh, but he was doing it in a term of where he was going to throw the football. You're just jealous of him <laughs> because when you were a quarterback, you were on the cover of every magazine in the world. You are correct. What were you on? Field and stream once or twice? <laughs> Seen a lot of this out of the Patriots. Only one receiver, and it's Randy Moss. And they throw to him. And Moss takes it to the 13 yard line. Ron, in your film study, you saw a lot of that where there's max protection, only one receiver, but that one receiver is hard to cover. Yeah, and that particular play was that smoke that I talked about again. He runs a dart route to the inside. It was a running play called. But once you see the corner, in this case, Delta O'Neill, six or seven yards off, Brady just stands up and throws a quick dart route to Randy Moss. You know, you can tell they work on this stuff. They really are seeing the defense with the same eyes. And surprisingly, considering the first time they really worked together was opening day. Same formation, this time it's press coverage on the bottom. And the run for Morris is a loss of yardage by Robert Gathers and forces a New England field goal attempt of 35 yards. Huge play by Robert Gathers right there. He's been playing tackle, he's been playing and he's been playing linebacker. That was huge right there to force this field goal attempt for the Patriots. Gathers, who came up with several big plays in the week one win against Baltimore, and <laughs> to this point, we're getting close to the end of business here tonight. It's the only win of the season for the Bengals. Kostowski officially 36. 
bangs another one through. And they could have lost that game as well because Baltimore had the ball inside the five for about eight plays late to tie. 365 days ago, this was the patch place of work as well. New England visited here. The Bengals losing to New England on that night, 38 to 13. Right now it's 27 to 10. With 13 minutes left to see if Cincinnati can mount a comeback. Glenn Holt from the six. Brandon Merriweather, the first round pick out of Miami of Florida as part of the tackle process at the 20 yard line. Those of you just tuning in, here's what's happened tonight. Brady has been pretty sharp. One pick, but two touchdowns. Randy Moss bringing in one of them. And that gave New England a 17-7 lead and answered after Cincinnati had come down the field to score. And in the absence of Lawrence Maroney, Sammy Morris has a 100-yard game for the third time in his NFL career. His career high is 110, twice in his second year as a Redskin against Houston and Seattle. Tonight, 105. And Palmer on first down back to the air behind Chad Johnson off his hands and incomplete. So we talked about the game here a year ago. Marvin Lewis, his team since then, threatening to fall to 6 and 11 if they lose this game tonight. Not just 6 and 11, but then 1 and 6 in the last seven, lost their last three last year. People wonder if he's in trouble. He's not in trouble here. They fill the seats. Before Marvin Lewis, there were a million empty seats here, and they never got anywhere near 500. They were 4-12 and 12 on average for five years before Marvin Lewis. He gave these people hope where there had been none, but he's got to give them a defense if they're going to actually contend for anything. Well, time for Palmer. The pass is caught. Out of bounds to tight end Reggie Kelly. Three catches in the first three games. Two here tonight. That one was 20 yards. Reggie Kelly coming up with some outstanding catches tonight. As I said earlier, came into this game with only three catches. But since the Patriots are double covering Hoosman Zada and Chad Johnson, it's leaving the one-on-one -on -one coverage to Reggie Kelly, and he is responding positively. Don't you think they miss the presence of a third receiver? Like Chris Henry? Yep. Suspended for eight games. Hoosman Zada taking down at the 45 yard line. No, you mentioned the reputation of Marvin Lewis as a guy who very successful defensive coach. So why is the defense not come as quickly here? Well, uh, many things have contributed. Let's start with number one. He inherited an offense. So you build around Carson Palmer. You invest your money in Hoosman Zada, Rudy Johnson, Chad Johnson, a couple of tackles. And so that's a lot of what they've done. And it's paid great dividends winning the division two years ago. Here's Chad making James Sanders miss and getting a first down at the 42 yard line. The fans want a flag for a late hit or an out of bounds hit. None forthcoming. So it'll be Chad's third reception to move the chains. So what do they do on defense to try to build? Let's watch the play again. Chad right here getting pushed out of bounds and a little extra push over there from Brandon Merriweather as he was beyond the white line on the sideline. I would say Merriweather got away with one there. Should have been a flag, was not, and there is a flag here on the Bengals for a false start and the frustrated fans. False start, offense, number 77, five-yard penalty, still first down. Taking it out on the other guys wearing stripes here tonight. So listen, guys, here's what they've tried to do. Try to build through the draft through defense, but what happened? David Pollock hurt his neck last year. Hasn't played, likely not to play again. Odell Thurman, the suspension that he has had, which was continued by the league all the way through this season. Jonathan Joseph is playing. Frosty Rucker, defensive end, has not seen the field to this point with a hamstring injury this year. Leon Hall had an interception tonight. Palmer almost throws a pick there as Eugene Wilson from the free safety spot was coming to get it. So to try to add to that defense via the draft, it hasn't worked out, and now it's starting to have an effect of this team has to outscore people. Well, it really hurts you when your two top picks in 2005 are not on the field. One with an injury and one with a suspension. We talked about character issues a lot. They've tried to get beyond that, but there still is a carryover with Thurman and with Henry on offense. 45, Palmer's pass is a six-yard gain to Hushman's on at the 39-yard line. We'll have third down coming up, third about eight. 
The Patriots secondary is doing an outstanding job. They are like Velcro on these Bengal wide receivers. They're catching the football, immediately being tackled. You're seeing almost zero yards after the catch. Big down for Carson Palmer right here at third and eight. Oh for five on third down on the Bengals. Chad Johnson trying to win a battle to get to the spot. Ellis Hobbs was keeping it from getting there. That's why the uh, Bengals want a flag and they're not getting it there. Fourth down, they'll go for it. Ellis Hobbs does a real nice job of just getting his hands on Chad Johnson and undercutting the route. And Chad Johnson's nice job the last minute, basically knocking the ball away. Ellis Hobbs always comes up with the interception. Go for it here, Chad. Well, they're down by 17. Fourth and eight. They need a play. The Patriots are loaded with defensive backs on the field. Palmer, time, throws, held on to. And the first down maintained by Hushmanzada, who is a very tough receiver. Touraj. Bushmanzada, TJ, the first and last letters of his first name. First down. Bushmanzada does a great job of working back to Carson Palmer. He's got the coverage on top. He works back and snags the ball, plucks it out of the air, shows those strong hands. And a quick shot to Bushmanzada. The first round pick, Merriweather, wraps him up. Loss of a couple of yards. Susie? Well, Mike, you know, in just the last hour before kickoff, TJ and Carson were still reviewing the game plan and making sure they were on the same page. They were still adding wrinkles in this afternoon's walkthrough. And TJ said it's never too late to make sure we're seeing the same things, hearing the same things, and it's time like this when it really pays off. And Carson and Chad, uh, in addition to TJ, were all very positive about their game plan. The Bengals had a really good feeling about what they had on paper against the Patriots. But on this turf, the Patriots are better than what was on the paper. <laughs> yeah. Especially that first quarter. Uh -huh. Palmer hit as he throws. High for Chad Johnson. Incomplete. Well, third down coming up. It was Ty Warren's pressure that may have forced the throw to be high. See, here's what you want to say here. That the TJ Hushmanzada came into this game after three games. Number one in the league in catching. They came in as a group Number two overall in passing, lots of points. They could, they are being sabotaged by their defense, but more than that, they're being beaten by a better team. I mean, New England is apparently this good because Cincinnati is a good team. These are not, those are not false numbers coming in here. And there you had Chad Johnson open, but Ty Warren had the pressure on Carson Palmer, forced the Aaron throw. Third and ten from the thirty. It's a five-man rush. Palmer has to go out of the pocket to throw, not his comfort zone, and Chapman can't hang on. So they did everything but hold on to the ball. And you know what, Tony? I, I know what you're saying on their reputation with the Bengals, but how good is this team? Well, it, 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 it's a totally incomplete team. Their defense is, is dragging them down. The offense, however, if you come in with Hushmanzada and Johnson, Johnson number one in yardage after three games, Hushmanzada number one in total catches after three, at least offensively, you would think they'd be able to put up 25 to 30 every game, and they're getting 10 at the moment. They didn't last week in Seattle either. This is a 48-yard field goal attempt from Shane Graham. You need a field goal some way along the way to complete the comeback, and Graham hooks it in. Uh, impressive solid leg from 48 for that one 27 13 the lead is 14 the New England Patriots play the juggernaut that is the Cleveland Browns next week how about the Browns and after you watch the Browns in the division play a 51 45 shootout with Cincinnati you say, well maybe an aberration maybe since he's defense but then when they score 24 in the first half against Baltimore yesterday well, maybe Cleveland's gonna be around into October and November as a factor in this division this year yeah and Derek Anderson certainly has stabilized their offense deep kick Ellis Hobbs who had the 108 yard pickoff return against the Jets feeling greedy and good about taking it out from inside the 20 that was, uh, was taken seven yards deep in the end zone and only brought out to the 15. Tom Brady, that magic look has been working once again for the Pats. In the future, 
There have never been more people at a Bengals home game. 66,113, a franchise record here tonight to see the Patriots looking to go 4 0. And throwing up 14. Randy Moss with the grab at the 35 yard line. It's like a 20 yard gain, 19 yard gain. Look really simple. And a frustrating night for Justin Smith and the Bengals. It's a weird feeling game. It feels like 9 on 7 out there, doesn't it? Seems like our games never work, does it? Our games never work. We're getting good, pretty good pressure, though. We ain't, we ain't sacking them. Draws nine on seven reference to practice. Practice where there's nine offensive players and only seven defensive players. Obviously, advantage offense. Continuing to throw, cover deep. Brady checks it down and completes it to Sammy Marsh. Who's had a huge game, stiff arm across midfield to take Hernandez Jones to the 46. And the games are talking about the twist with the defensive lineman. He was talking with John Thornton, and here's Susan. And Mike, here's the sad commentary about the Bengals. It's stated by their defensive captain, John Thornton. He said, we don't respond well to adversity. When we play bad, we are really bad. And maybe it's just because some of these young guys need to learn that in the NFL, you have to fight through the tough times and often some of the guys on this team when they get down they really get down in the dumps and they just can't recover. Yeah Thornton pointed at his time in Tennessee when the Titans were moving around and they responded to adversity. And it has become a recurring theme for the Bengals guys are hurt and this and that. Oh up 14 they throw and it's deflected out of Brady's hand by Justin Smith who just talked about it. I'm getting there but we're not getting it done. It is grabbed by a Patriots offensive lineman and a penalty marker is thrown. Logan Mankins. We are in the middle of it. Let's if see it, what if happens. If it was a pass, he's an illegal receiver. If it's a fumble, he's fine. Now, what will the interpretation be? Illegal touch of a four pass offense number 70. Smith, who just we heard from in his uh, wireless microphone commentary, talking about getting to the quarterback, finally gets there and it goes up in the air. Let's see what the Bengals are asking here. Illegal touch of a four pass offense number seven. The pill is declined. Second down. First, it's a natural reaction. Second, it's the smart thing. Don't let a Bengal get a pick or anything like that. Much rather take the penalty than the disaster. The illegal touching rule for offensive linemen was adjusted a little bit this year for the accidental situations where you go into a guy but a ball up in the air that is still living by the old rule of illegal touching and Mankins did a good job of giving himself up rather than try to roll the ball and possibly get it knocked out of his hands second and 19 and up 14 is there any surprise in your mind that they were running four times in a row or throwing it I should say four times in a row now five with Dante Stallworth I guess not to the 32 yard line first down you figure they just line up and run it here to kill clock but they're doing it via the air well if, if you see what the Bengals are doing defensively you know they're loading up the box they're trying to stop the run they have got those one on one isolation routes on the outside with these receivers I mean it's like pitch and catch it's like seven on seven as we say in practice uh, when there are no defensive linemen rushing the quarterback gain of 23 there. Well, Stallworth was another one of the additions in the offseason. And Welker, I think people Stallworth, <laughs> Moss, a whole new receiving core paying off. And people expected more from Stallworth, but a knee injury missed 30 practice sessions when they were installing the offense. So he's been a little slower to get with the program, but catching up here, a gain of eight. Let's follow up on, on what Susie said with, with John Thornton being the defensive captain, saying that when they have bad games, they have really bad games. Jaws, you brought up uh, the bend but don't break theory of defense, and here's what the captain said for us. It's either hard as a rock or we break. We don't have any bend in there. And now you're watching. They had the Patriots pretty far back, almost trapped, and then a couple of plays, bang, zoom, they're all the way down the field again. They are bending and they are breaking. Yeah, you can't have that. Odd for a captain to say that. <laughs> that was my point, right? <laughs> I agree. <laughs> he was honest. Yes. Sammy Morris into the secondary, into the 20 yard line. We had mentioned Frosty Rucker a series ago, a young defensive lineman for Cincinnati who had not seen the field much this year. 
He has uh, checked in as they get some fresh bodies in. Here in this fourth quarter, Rucker was inactive the first three weeks of the season. Coming off the hamstring injury. And Mike, Sammy Morris had a terrific night here. And don't forget the offensive line. They have been dominant. Matt Light, Logan Mankins, Dan Coppin, Russ Hochstein, Nick Kayser. They are winning the line of scrimmage. If you control the line of scrimmage, you're going to have football games like we're having right now. Back to Morris, former Buffalo Bill, Miami Dolphin. At this point, it's <laughs> a very talented football team. But the commandable going 16 and 0. I, I just, I don't see it happening. As good as they are. Well, here's what they're not going to be: 0 and 3 or 0 and 4. All right, and with every successive week, the question gets louder, as it did for the Colts a few years ago. You know, you look at this team, the way they're playing, granted, they have not played any great team so far. At Dallas, at the Colts, do they win those games? <laughs> <laughs> Just, come on, I now. don't have a crystal ball here at the time they're going to win. a month away. Gonna, what could happen in between? You know, it's Wilson so and I have to talk about this every day. <laughs> That's why you're on the air five days a week. He's on one day a week. <laughs> I gotta answer that. <laughs> the hypothetical. It's in the wind. <laughs> Look, third and five, timeout yeah. taken by New England. It's so early in the piece. Right. Don Shula and Greasy and all those Dolphins from the end of the season, they haven't even bought the champagne right. yet to put on ice and drink the first they time. Better get a, they better get ready, is all I'm saying, okay? We have third down coming. Pats at the 15 yard line. Tom Brady. Over 75% completions for four consecutive weeks. That would tie if it holds up. The NFL record when throwing at least 20 passes, completing 75% in four consecutive games. Kurt Warner and Carson Palmer. Palmer did it at the end of 04, the start of 05. And Brady adds to his numbers. So too does Randy Moss. NFL leader, seven touchdown receptions in the first four weeks. That's the trade of the year, is it not? Randy Moss coming to the Patriots for a fourth it's round the trade pick. of the century. Here you'll see the Bengals come with pressure. You're going to get Leon Hall singled up. He, he pretty much whips on the jam, the line of scrimmage. This is pitch and catch for Tom Brady and Randy Moss. That fourth round pick better be real good. <laughs> <laughs> be real good. Yeah. Yeah, if, if you're going to press Randy Moss, and this is the one area where I think he's most improved since he's come here to New England. He can get off the bump. It used to be one of his liabilities in his game. Now he doesn't have a liability. The first round pick was already in the 07 draft, and as a guy who has not played for the Raiders yet, they should have gone for two so they can get 38 points for a fourth consecutive game. <laughs> Moss over 100 yards for the fourth game this season. Here's Michelle. Well, you guys are talking about that trade for Moss. Before it was consummated, the Patriots brought Moss up to Foxborough to meet with team owner Bob Kraft. I talked with Kraft on the field tonight, not only about this incredible athleticism he acquired, but the conversation he had with Moss to make sure he was getting the right guy. He said he was struck by this. Look at the passion. Look at the team work. He said he's passionate. He's smart. He took a haircut, giving up seven, $9.7 million for $3 million for the contract. Kraft told me lots of players say it's not about the money, it's about respect. But with Randy, it was about winning. I take people as I find them when I look them in the eye. And what I saw looking Randy Moss in the eye was how smart and dedicated he is. And, you know, these teammates in New England agree. Randy Moss is, is a lighthearted guy in the locker room. Uh, right now they're winning, so everything's good, and it's easy to say, well, everything's good. What happens when it goes bad? But what you hear again and again is how smart Randy Moss is and how much of a team player he's become. I, I think Bill Belichick and, and Tom Brady are the super nannies of the NFL. <laughs> super guys. nanny, there you go. <laughs> wow. Fourth 100-yard game of the season, 50th of his career, ties Don Maynard, third on the all-time list behind the incomparable Jerry Rice and Marvin Harrison. Returned by Glenn Holt. 24-yard line, Willie Andrews joins Larry Izzo, three-time Pro Bowl special teamer on the team. <laughs> Buffalo just down the road from Binghamton, I might add. It's a long road. It's a New York six, five hours on the throughway just down the road. What, do you got friends coming in from Binghamton University? 
Pushman's out of the grab, a gain of 16. Draws homecoming game two. He's from That's Western right. New York. So Lackawanna High School. Lackawanna High School. So Randy Moss back home. with his uh, success tonight. Four times, 100 yards. It's the first time in the history of the National Football League that a player has gone over 100 in each of his first four games with his team. And Homer intercepted for the second time tonight by Randall Gay at the 46-yard line. And the Bengals will have a familiar ring to them because they will be, again, the last place Cincinnati Bengals. They'll be one and three and at the bottom of the AFC North. To follow up on what Michelle said about Randy Moss, because, you know, everything is going very, very well right now, and you don't know what's going to happen when it goes bad, but it's possible, Jaws, it doesn't go bad here. I agree. In New England, hey, it doesn't go bad. This has been you know? an incredible performance by the New England Patriots. This is a complete football team. There is not a weakness on this team. On the offensive side of the ball, they can run. They're starting and, running back. And out. Look, what he's, look what he's great. done. All the wide receivers contribute. Tom Brady's one of the best. But he's the best that Tom Brady's ever had to work with. He's got maybe the, the best grouping of wide receivers he's ever had to work with. No, not I don't think. I know. It's the best group he's ever had. He's now we could talk about MVP for Tom Brady. That's kind of what I'm thinking rather than undefeated. Tom Brady's won everything. Super Bowls, 77% of his games, not the MVP, he's on his way. That carry, by the way, was by Kyle Eckel, number 38, activated today. The young man who went to Navy, served his two years of military service, cut by the Dolphins in preseason, picked up by the Patriots in their practice squad. And Bill Belichick, all those Naval Academy players mean so much to him. His dad, Steve, okay. was at the Naval Academy as a coach. Bill grew up in Annapolis. And Kyle Eckel makes his first NFL carry on a night that Randy Moss and the Patriots get on national TV and say, <clears throat> pretty darn good. <laughs> and part of Kenny and Scott on SportsCenter after the game, the GMC Monday Night Football postgame report are the Packers playoff bound. Chris Berman, Bill Parcells, Keyshawn Johnson go inside that. And Kobe Bryant explains why he'll be choosing his words carefully this season on SportsCenter after the game. One more Kyle Echol carry as uh, Tom Brady is out and done. Matt Castle's coming to quarterback. And here are Brady's final numbers. As below his uh, or season numbers now, Jaws, he had a below average night. Yeah, I know it was only 78% complete. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been like a career high for me. <laughs> wow. He is playing it at such an incredible level. He looks so comfortable. He has command of this offense. He loves that shotgun formation. We talked at the top of the show. 66% of his pass is coming out of the shotgun formation. He had a big smile on his face yesterday. We talked to him about that shotgun formation. And you can see he's very comfortable when he's away from center. Injured Cincinnati Bengals defensive lineman. One more injury. Some perspective on Tom Brady. Played his 100th career game. His 98th career start tonight. We're going to give him the win at this point, okay? Yes. So he has 74. If he wins his next two, he'll tie Roger Staubach for the most wins in NFL history. First 100 starts of your career. You have to be on a good team, and you have to be very good. And he's both. And when we asked Bill Belichick, who, as I mentioned, his dad was coaching at Navy. At the time, Bill was a young man. He doesn't remember a lot of the specific stuff, but certainly remembers Staubach and his presence. And I said, are there comparisons? And he said, Roger Staubach was always a hard worker. He fit in with the rest of the team. You didn't know there was any star quality about him on his way to winning the Heisman at uh, Navy. And Tom Brady's the same way. As Belichick said, you go ask the guys in the equipment room, in the weight room, go ask the trainers. Who's in there with the linemen? Who's the last guy doing weights? Who's the hardest worker? Tom Brady. And so similar parallels, not just in success, but also the way success has been reached with Roger Staubach, one of the greats in NFL history. Castle hands to Echol. Not only is Tom Brutful, I like being with my family. I try not to give people things to talk about. And I said, yeah, but things happen. And he said, you're telling me? <laughs> He's in the news a lot. As a dad and for the people that he dates, all that stuff. He's in the news all the time. Yeah. Sounds like a man crush, doesn't it, Jaws? He's, and I know it, it is. you've it, got one. I love him as a football <laughs> player. Hey, I, I can watch Tom Brady every single day. He understands the quarterback position. Well, what the Patriots are about to do is to start. They are going to win their first four games here by 20 or more points. In NFL history, it's only happened once to win by 20 or more each of your first four games. 
1920 Buffalo All-Americans did that. <laughs> and at that point, the first year of the league, you were allowed to play non-league teams. So they did it in part against non-league teams. Like high school teams. Yeah. <laughs> they play. So this is really historic.